Good morning. We, Good morning. Uh, I haven't been down here since um, Christmas. We've been busy, but we had a wonderful Christmas break, stayed at home. I hope all of you did. My um, daughter, Caroline, who's a freshman here, was home for Christmas, so I had to switch from watching Narcos on Netflix to Hallmark movies. And that was a, that was a big change for me. But um, Becky, is, she always, she, I always let her choose the shows because she never chooses chick flicks. She always chooses something that, that I enjoy with a lot of shooting and, and all that kind of thing. But, but Caroline was home and Caroline's got a different opinion. But, but we, um, one document, oh wait, Becky's, since then though, we've um, had a lot of interesting things happen. Becky might want to talk about. Yeah, okay, so today, um, hopefully, I need your prayers, our family needs your prayers. Our daughter-in-law, Sarah, um, has a baby girl that was due on Monday, and so today when a hospital room, there's no room in the inn, is what I like to say about, about the hospital right now, so when there's a room available in the hospital, they'll, she'll go in and they'll induce her, so we'd love to have your prayers, and hopefully we'll have our second granddaughter born this afternoon. <laughs> Which, okay, I'm going to go off script here. So, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this, talking Paul. So, we have two granddaughters right now. Not one, we have two. One hasn't been born yet. And what the governor said about a baby being born and then the parents deciding whether to let the baby live while the doctors kept the baby comfortable, that's the sickest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. The governor's comments, he's a doctor, it reminded me of something Dr. Joseph Mangala would say, who worked for Adolf Hitler. It's just, um, it's, it's not, it's, it's just not American and it's not Christ Christian and it's just something that we need to fight every step of the way. If they get away with that, the next thing it'll be killing a six month old baby because they find out it has some mental deficiency or killing an old person because they're too much trouble to, to look after. So we can't go down that slippery slope. So please fight that whenever you hear it. Thank you, Becky. Um, also over Christmas, we, um, I watched a documentary about the 1980s. It was on some Discovery Channel or something. I don't know what it was, History Channel. And I couldn't believe all the political things that were going on that I didn't even know about. And I started thinking, well, what was I doing in the 1980s? And the answer is I was doing what you're doing right now. I was going to college. I was dating girls until I found the right one. I was, um, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I was, I was doing the same thing you guys did Wednesday night with that service that went so, to late. I was studying the Gospels, the red letters, of, of the, the words of Jesus Christ, and focused mainly on that. And just, you should really do that because it, it'll surprise you what Jesus said. It's not what you've probably been told he said. And it's something you have to read in context. And it's something you have to, when you read it, Look at who he was speaking to, who his audience was. And um, he, was, he was not saying, giving commands for everybody every time he spoke. He was talking to certain groups, and the apostles were different than, than uh, just the general pop population, and they had a different mission. But just, just do that while you're in college. And, and then, then I went to law school. I was worried about where, what, what I was going to do when I got out. I was thinking about, um, like I already said, who my spouse was going to be. And so I now understand why you guys aren't so interested in politics. When I was your age, I couldn't, I could, I mean, I didn't have any control about, I mean, I, I felt like the old guys with ties and the um, older people with gray hair controlled everything anyway, that there was nothing I could do. But then I started working and I started looking at my paycheck and how much came out every week that I had earned. And then I started listening to Rush Limbaugh on the radio about 1992. And I started to realize that my future depended on me taking an interest in what was happening in the country. And I slowly 
you know, move towards that way of thinking. And, and so I, I guess what, what, what I'm saying is I get it. I understand where you guys are. And we, um, for that reason, when the leaders of CPAC came to see us this past fall and asked Liberty if Liberty would be their satellite location for the, the big, huge event, CPAC, Conservative, what? What that stands for? Conservative Political Action Conference. Since 1974, the American Conservative Union and Young Americans for Freedom have had this annual convention. Ronald Reagan gave the first keynote address, and it it began to coalesce from there into the the largest gathering of conservative activists and public officials. Well, they last year I believe they had Colorado Christian University and Pepperdine as their satellite locations. But they, they started looking at Liberty and saying, there's no place like Liberty. And we really want to have it there. There's so many colleges within two or three hours of here where, stu- where conservative students can come to Liberty instead of going to Washington, D.C. and having to fight the traffic and the expense of uh, hotel rooms and all that, whatever the problems are with being in a big city. And so um, Scott Lamb went to work on putting together It'll be a simulcast event. It'll be seen in Washington at the same time it's seen here. And Scott started putting together just a, a stellar line of, uh, of guests. One of them is actor Gary Sinise. He was Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump. I don't know if you guys ever saw him. He's going to talk about his, his book. He's, he's uh, signing book plates to go into 2,500 copies that'll be available that day. But he, um, he's bringing with him his friend from the Reagan Library. Explain who he is. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so Gary's next door neighbor is John Highbush, who runs the Ronald Reagan Library out in Simi, California. They're actually doing an event the night before in California. Then they're going to hop on a red-eye flight and fly over here and do the same thing for you guys. So John's in charge of the Ronald Reagan Library, and he also has the Ronald Reagan Institute in D.C., and he really wants to tell y'all, you guys about that because he wants to pull some Liberty University students into the Ronald Reagan uh, atmosphere. So if you're kind of a fan of Ronald Reagan, I know you might not have been alive when he was president, but if you're a fan of Ronald Reagan, John's going to be here that day to tell you more about that. And this is that. the guy who carried the nuclear codes, right? No, 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 no. Tell, tell about uh, Steve Chelander. Yeah, so Colonel Steve Chelander uh, flew in the United States Air Force Thunderbirds, and then he got asked by... He got asked by Ronald Reagan to come and carry the nuclear codes, and he did that from 1986 to 1988. So Colonel Chelander was there at the Berlin Wall, the Moscow Summit, the Reykjavik Summit. He was there for history, and he's going to tell us some about that. Scott went after more military, veteran-oriented um, speakers because, because, because I watched that documentary over Christmas, and I know where you guys are, and I know um, that's where I was when I was your age. And so we we want this to be an event that honors our military, our veterans. Um, Edward Harrell, a Marine. Uh, Edgar Harrell. How many many of you all have heard of the USS Indianapolis, the greatest uh, naval disaster ever? Edgar Harrell is a survivor. He's one of the last remaining survivors of the USS Indianapolis. Uh, 1,100 people were on the boat. There's about 30 people left that survived. 900 went in the water. They floated in the ocean for five days until finally they were rescued. And uh, he was a Christian, and he was calling out to his comrades who were getting eaten alive by sharks, you know, to call on the name of Jesus and be saved. Seventy years later, he's about, I think, 96 years old. He's going to be here that day. He's one of my closest friends, uh, you know, of the World War II generation. You do not want to miss being here for that, that event. Yes. And Donald Trump Jr. also will be here that day. He'll be speaking. And he's, he's um, his dad actually made it illegal. Listen to this. Wait, listen, listen, listen. His dad made it illegal for Americans to hunt big, this is what I was told, to hunt big game um, animals in Africa so so Don Jr. would stop hunting so much. He's one of us. He's a redneck. He loves to get out in the woods. He loves to ride four-wheelers. He's, um, his speech is not going to be super political either. None of these are. And and Scott has a long list of other... um, of other speakers that we can't quite announce yet that um, are of the same caliber as the ones I just read to you. And, you know, I, I just uh, talked to Scott Hicks before I came up here. He's the provost. And he's promised that if you guys 
See, we really need to have a good crowd for this, to, for, these, for this caliber of speakers to be here. And we need you guys to attend. And our, your professors have agreed that if you don't go to their class that day, classes won't be canceled, but if you decide to come into this event that day, instead of going to class, you'll be excused, but you'll also be, the professor will also go to extra lengths to make sure you don't miss anything and that you're caught up and he reviews, she or she reviews whatever you did miss, so you won't get behind on your work. We don't want to, we don't want to cause you any academic problems, but this is an opportunity that most colleges never has to have this level of speakers and to, uh, and there'll be you know, lots of other college kids coming in from other colleges around the state in North Carolina. So I hope you'll, you'll, get, you'll, you'll come so you can interact with them, get to know them. And um, I really um, just asking you to do me a favor and show up, please. <laughs> that's, yeah. um, that's my request to you. And if, if you would take out your uh, cell phones, we'd, we'd really like to get a head count kind of going uh, because we're going to have a lot of guests coming in, veterans and military from the community. It's free. It's open to the public. <clears throat> We've got a, a, a way for you to RSVP just simply by, go, by uh, typing in CPAC to 839-858. Now, don't forget, we got to tell them about the door prizes. Now, yeah. also, this is something Scott did. He got, uh, where is it? Is it here? It's up there. Wait, 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 oh, wait, up wait, there. Wait, wait. Wait. Save it for the end here. All right. Oh. First of all, hey, let me. All right, go ahead. All right, so, go ahead. so first of all, we're going to be giving away 500 autographed copies of some of the books that the authors are bringing in. There'll be some for sale, but we're also just going to give away 500, and it'll be part of your ticket stub. We're going to be giving away 1,000 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. <laughs> oh, you guys have heard of Chick-fil-A? Okay, okay. I, I didn't know if that, if that would go over or anything, but okay, so we're giving away 1,000 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. The concessions will be 500, open. 500, 500. No, no, it's 1,000. We up the ante. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, come on. All right, that's He fine. always that's tells fine. me, go big or go home. Now I'm, he's, I'm uh, sitting here reading 500, but yeah. 1,000 That's what we call impromptu. Okay. okay. <laughs> and there's going to be food trucks, and the concessions are going to be open, but some of y'all won't even need to take part of that because you'll get the Chick-fil-A. Third, every hour on the hour, we're going to give away three $1,000 scholarships. So 15 of you will get $1,000, but you got to be here to win. All right? And finally, I'll save this one for you. We've got something real special to give away at the end. Um, any, any guesses? Any guesses what that'll be? All right, let's, let's give them a hint. All right, a local, there it is, there it is. A local, a local dealership, uh, Mabry M Nissan, right? Yeah, Nissan of Lynchburg. Chris Mabry. Told Scott, he said, I really, I really want these students to show up. So I will give a free, what kind of car is it? It's a Nissan Kick, it's their mini SUV. He's gonna give one away as a door prize, but only to somebody who's been here for all the sessions, okay? So you gotta so, be here to win. All, all right, right, so we're, we're bribing you the best we can, we're begging you to show up, but we're living in a world where in the last seven days, politicians have advocated killing babies after they were born, putting a 90% tax on the rich, saying we have to have sympathy for ISIS, proposed confiscating all of our guns, and also had a sitting governor exposed wearing a KKK outfit the same week he promoted infanticide. That's the world that you guys are going to have to live in. I'm 56. I'll probably be gone before it gets really bad. But you, guys, but you guys are going to be here for a long time, and you've got to make sure you make the world a better place. And this is a way to get, to get prepared and to learn and to hear from leaders and about how important our, our um, men in uniform, men and women in uniform have been to, to gain the freedoms that we have today. And it, I promise you, you won't regret it if you show up. Do us a favor and RSVP today so we can make good plans, okay? Yeah, please RSVP. And um, David, you want me to go ahead and introduce